I'm your host, Brittany McDowell, and thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of our PAC Politics Podcast. If you don't know, our podcast is brought to you by our organization, our United Resource PAC. We are a tax exempt political organization. On today's show, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, you know, if you know about our organization, if you listen to our podcast, you know that we are all for COVID-19 economic stimulus and relief. But today we're going to examine the case against stimulus and helping specific industries. Uh, We're going to talk about specifically a business mogul who cautions that the U.S. is in danger of putting too much stimulus into the economy and as a result risking inflation, like massive inflation, right? Uh, So, you know, that 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 also kind of leads us to ask the question, well, why can't we just let businesses fail? So we're going to talk about that. And then also we have a resource to check the status of your most recent economic impact payment if you have yet to receive it. That's what I have in store for you today. Let's go ahead and let's get this show started. You're listening to another episode of our PAC Politics Podcast. It's about that time for the next episode. This is Brittany. Just wanted to shoot you a quick reminder. Look in the description box of this episode and you can find a link to our website. On our website, you can find our latest blog posts. You can find our contact information. You even want to make a contribution, you can go over there and do that as well. You can find out the policies we are looking at and targeting as an organization. You know, I say all the time that we are a tax exempt political organization. If you want to know more about that, Again, go on over to our website, our-pack.com, where you can find out everything you want to know. You can do everything you want to do. We will gladly, gladly, gladly welcome you on our website with open arms. Again, check out our website in the description box below. Let's talk about Kevin's case against stimulus. Now, when I say Kevin, I'm referring to Kevin O'Leary. And Mr. O'Leary made an appearance on Yahoo Finance Live, and he said that the U.S. government should only send checks to people who were unemployed. We shouldn't be just sending checks to everybody. Um, And he also says that there needs to be uh, an exclusive and and very laser-like focused on Um, putting more money into ramping up vaccine distribution. He, in his interview on Yahoo Finance Live, he cautioned that the U.S. is uh, in danger of, you know, by doing such a massive stimulus, we're in danger of putting too much money into the economy and risking what he refers to as horrific, horrific inflation. Now, If you know anything about Kevin O'Leary, you know that he's not a fan of industry bailouts, especially um, in this past year. He's made that very clear with multiple comments. Um, But one of the things that I want to read here that he said uh, comes from um, or it's, it's rather it's about industry bailouts. And he says, and I'm quoting here, we have too many airlines in terms of capacity because business spending will be down somewhere between 20% and 25% for years to come. And he continues with that statement saying, just give unemployment checks to the employees. They're highly trained. They'll find new jobs in the digital economy. And airlines are very good at going bankrupt. (laughs) They do it every 10 years. So it's just fine. Stop spending money there. End quote. Now, I agree with Kevin O'Leary that we do need to stop these industry bailouts. Okay, we need to stop bailing out industries and we have to focus on bailing out the people. 
That is where I have agreement with Kevin O'Leary. But where I have disagreement with him is that he thinks that we only need to give money to the unemployed. I quite frankly think that we need to give money to all Americans, but we do need to base it on two things. It shouldn't just be a free for all, right? We shouldn't be giving Warren, Warren Buffett, you know, twelve hundred like he twelve hundred dollars to him. He probably spends that on lunch, right? But but I do think that we need to base the distribution of economic relief on two things: annual income and employment status. So again, in that respect, I do kind of agree with Kevin O'Leary, but I do have differences of opinion regarding the fact that we should only help the unemployed. Something else, um, in addition to um, not just giving stimulus to every American that Kevin O'Leary talked about in his um, appearance on Yahoo Finance Live was was in relation to us as a country deciding to help specific industries, specifically during this pandemic. Now, he made, um, Kevin O'Leary made comments about the restaurant industry, and I'm going to read you exactly what he said. He said, quoting here, I'd like to take care of everybody that works in a restaurant that's unemployed. Okay, I'm going to pause that kind of quote. Let me reread that because think about what kind of sense that makes. I'd like to take care of everyone that works in a restaurant that's unemployed. If you're unemployed, you're not actively working in a restaurant, right? It, maybe if you had worked, if you have worked, but if you are working, if you, if you work in, uh, in a restaurant, you're not unemployed. Let me continue with the quote here. I do not want to bail out every restaurant owner. I'm sorry. Um, and quote here. I agree there, right? The reality... Um, in terms of people, as I mentioned in the previous segment that I just did, the reality is that not all people should be bailed out. Now, in my opinion, uh, who we bail out should be based on their annual income as well as their employment status. Um, and that's not to say that people who are employed shouldn't get any type of assistant, assistance, but maybe they just need less assistance than the people who are actually employed. But anywho, um, I don't think that in, in that same kind of uh, train of thought that all businesses deserve a bailout, regardless of their industry. Um, I, I've kind of thought it was odd this entire time, this past year dealing with the pandemic. Um, and I, I'm wondering if anyone else thought this was kind of odd, but I thought it was kind of odd that <clears throat> we have... In several cases that we've heard, particularly from the right, against stimulus, um, the arguments have been kind of framed, even if not directly stated. Um, there's been kind of this, uh, things have been kind of alluded to the fact that people should have been prepared. Like your average person should have been prepared for some sort of pandemic to come out of somewhere and they should have had the uh, the, the forethought to totally be prepared. And if they are not prepared, that's on them because personal responsibility, right? But then when we examine businesses, businesses that mind you often have business plans, they forecast their finances, you know, they, uh, prepare for, uh, disasters and stuff. We have, they have absolutely no responsibility to prepare for any type of disaster even if they didn't prepare for a pandemic shouldn't they have prepared for some sort of decline in revenue like shouldn't they have some sort of plan to deal with that shouldn't they have some sort of plan to prepare for uh, a loss in um market capital right and, and market share shouldn't they have they have no they, they don't have personal responsibility right but that single mother or that single father or that family of five or whatever the case might be that that college student they should have had the the, the wherewithal to plan in advance for this pandemic I, i've just thought this was weird and not only are these Business is not expected to have any type of personal responsibility in managing how they get through this challenge. 
they just get bailed out. I think that's wrong. I, I think that this whole thing has been weird. It's exposed, um, again, that we have this kind of double standard when it comes to personal responsibility. We want to harp personal responsibility, personal responsibility when it comes to the average American. But where's the freaking personal responsibility, the corporate responsibility when it comes to these companies? They don't have any, apparently. Kevin O'Leary, uh, he continued with a statement and he said, and I'm quoting here, a better way to spend on restaurants would be to spend more money on the logistics of getting the vaccine out. Because I can guarantee you when people feel safe again, they will go to restaurants. It's an industry that bounces back very quickly, end quote. And I want to add to that, not only that, but if a business is industrious and innovative and they actually seek to rise to meet the challenge, which is what business is all about, right? You see a problem in the market and you say, hey, I can fix that. You're rising to meet that challenge. You, After you've already made that initial rise, you keep seeing challenges, challenges within your customer base, whatever the case might be. You keep rising to meet that challenge. That's what business is all about. That's what they should be doing. That's what we call the free market. The free market is not picking winners and losers. The free market is not saying, well, you can afford to have lobbyists come to Washington on your behalf and make sure that your industry, the airline industry, gets exactly what it needs and what's, what it wants and make that case for you and make sure everything is convenient for you, but they can't, so we're not going to have... That's not the free market. That's absolutely not the free market. Case in point here, and I'm going to use specifically the restaurant industry. If you ask me, well, Brittany, we have this pandemic. How can restaurants be innovative and industrious at a time when people are literally, especially if you're looking at the argument of people being scared to come out of their homes, how can you help them? Businesses, they just have to close. No, they don't. They absolutely don't. Even if they cannot allow people into their restaurant. Have they never heard of curbside pickup? Have they never heard of delivery? Now, will you have to make changes to your business model? Sure. But again, business is about challenge. If it was meant to be this easy cakewalk that you just got bailed out every time something happens, how dense would the market be with, with companies that never go out of business because they're not innovative? It is utterly wrong. And it's not like we as, as citizens are having a say in who goes and who stays in terms of business. It's specifically these politicians that are deciding, oh, oh we'll help this business, but we're not going to help that one. We'll help this industry, but we're not going to help that one. That is wrong. At the very least, have the what happened to the consumers deciding, you know what, you're not offering curbside pickup? You're not offering delivery. You don't deserve to be here. And let's say, let's say a business has gotten in on the curbside pickup, has gotten in on the delivery, but they're still not making it. Maybe they need to revamp their menu. Maybe just no one likes what they're serving. Maybe before the pandemic, they had bad reviews and their food was horrible. But we, we just want to bail them out. Okay, you bail them out, their food is still going to be horrible. No one's still going to want to eat it. Maybe they have good food, but their customer service was horrible. Let the market decide. To that point, O'Leary said, and I'm quoting once again, the ones that are going to survive will be the ones that should come back because they are still relevant end quote. Exactly. They're still relevant, but also the ones that come back and survive are the ones that deserve to because they rose to meet the challenge. That's what business is all about. If you have a business and it does not solve a problem on the market, you are not going to have customers. If you once solved a problem on the market, but either your competitors solve it better 
your market share is going to go away. It's going to decline because your competitors are taking your customers because they solve the problem better. If you just sit and cry and throw a tantrum because you're not actively solving a problem or because the solve the problem has changed and you refuse to come up with an adequate solution, that's not the market's fault, homeboy. That's your fault. You either rise to the challenge and rise and meet the challenge or you fail. We cannot have this bailout after bailout, especially at the taxpayer's expense. Maybe they should have like GoFundMe's or something, you know, bail out the airline industry, have a GoFundMe. But, but, but at the very least, we've got to stop having the taxpayer fund these bailouts. Why can't we just let businesses fail? What happens if businesses fail? Well, if they fail, uh, employees, they'll go elsewhere. Because you always hear the case, well, people are going to lose their jobs. People lose their jobs all the time. Is it, is it ideal? No. But they'll find something else. I mean, we live in a, in a, in a, in a society where, you know, you have to pay bills and stuff like that. And so if I lose my job at Bob's Burgers, I've got to go find something else to do. And if I don't have skills, I've got to reskill. And in the meantime, I have things, you know, uh, unemployment, so on and so forth that can help me while I'm reskilling in order to be a productive member of society. If we let businesses fail, new, more innovative competitors can capture the market. That could be that could be a competitor who is completely new to the market, um, a competitor that uh, was around when you were around and they just made changes and they stayed. Or here's something else that a lot of people don't think about that actually happens, you know, sometimes. Sometimes your competitor can arise out of that employee, that disgruntled employee, or that employee who realizes that, yo, this business owner isn't really solving the market. I really see what the problem is. I can do it better. Let me go over here and let me start my business. I may not, you know, have all the capital. I mean, whatever the case might be, but there will be something, especially if a problem is truly there for one. And if you are truly solving that problem, a new, more innovative problem solver is going to come along. The market will not allow a problem just to remain there. That's one of the beauties of capitalism. When you let it kind of be in its own kind of reality and you don't tamper with it, the market will come up with a problem solver because we capitalize on problems. That's what capitalism is. You capitalize on problems and fund the solution. If we let businesses fail, industries that are no longer relevant, they'll be forced to either change or die. It's an uncomfortable reality for a lot of people. And this is something that something, um, this is something that a lot of people don't talk about. Uh, and it's that a lot of people have a vested interest in things that don't work. Um, there are a lot of people who have jobs in industries that are no longer relevant. Um, there are a lot of people who have jobs kind of doing things status quo and if we re-innovate uh, or if we uh, change things in a way that rises to meet the current challenge in an effective and efficient manner, a lot of people will lose their jobs. So do we just ignore the problem and act like it's not there? Do we just sit and act like, well, this is a problem that can't be solved? Or do we say, hey, we ha- we have a way to solve the problem and we understand that it creates another problem because other people, you know, will be in this horrible situation. But is that problem not solvable? Are you saying that those people aren't capable of, you know what I mean? Like uh, whether it's, you know, being reskilled and going into another job, another industry, or why are we not, you know, teaching them that, hey, you can also start a business yourself. Is it guaranteed it will be successful? No. But that's another subject for another day. Why can't we just let businesses fail? They want to let the American people fail. 
They want to let states fail. Remember Mitch McConnell? Let them go bankrupt. I'll end here. One thing that Kevin O'Leary, there's a lot. There's some things that I agree with him on. There's some things that I disagree with him on. But one thing I totally, totally, totally agree with him on is this, and I'm quoting here. When you've got tens of millions of people that have no jobs, they're the ones we should be taking care of. End quote. Hey, so I want to tell you about our email list. Our email list is one of the best ways that you can stay in touch with us. If you look in the description box of this episode, you'll find a link to join our email list. By joining our email list, you'll get access to updates about policy and politicians that we support and oppose. When we have events, you'll get to know about those events via emails. And we'll just generally share news with you. We won't spam your inbox, I promise. Uh, And also, we inform you of our newest podcast episodes, which come out Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, by the way. Anyhow, joining the email list is not only easy, but it is absolutely free. Look in the description box of this episode. You'll find the link. Click it. Give us your name and your email. That's all we need. And you'll be in. So please join our email list and connect with us today. All right. Thanks. Today's resource that I am sharing is a resource that we have uh, mentioned and promoted several times on our podcast before. Um, What it is, is an official government tool that will help you confirm if the IRS and Treasury have sent your economic impact payment, uh, your stimulus check. Um, But in addition to that, it will also let you know the method by which they sent it, how they sent it, if they sent a uh, direct deposit, and if you didn't get it, maybe it went into a wrong account. Um, And if that's the case, it will also inform you of what will happen. Um, Maybe they mailed you a check and it's in the mail and you, you know, your mail's just, who knows, right? Um, But if I don't have that information, but this tool does, it again is an official government's tool. Uh, to get access to it, if you want, if you look in the description box of this episode, you will find a link to join our mailing list. We will not spam you. Um, our mailing list is an awesome way to keep in contact with us. Uh, but most importantly, it's an awesome way to get access to this tool. It's great, again, for you if you have not yet received your, received your economic impact payment, uh, as well as other people. It might be something that you want to get access to, so that way you can share it with them. Um, the resource also does mention um, the other kind of option that some people are going to um, have when it comes to actually getting your economic impact payment. Some people will get checks. Some people will get direct deposits. Some people who are eligible will end up having to utilize a tax credit. Uh, If you want more information, not just on um, how you'll get your payment, if you'll get it when, uh, you also, you know, might want to get information on this tax credit, uh, which this tool will also provide you information on. So again, if you look in the description box below, click the link to join our email list. You'll just have to give us your name, your email address. And as soon as you sign up, we'll get you a welcome email. And then like within a few seconds after that, you'll get the email with access to this resource. Uh, So you can find that in the description box below. I hope the resource is of benefit to you or someone you know. (music) 
All right, so that is our show for today, Monday, February 8th, 2021. Uh, We briefly examined the case against stimulus made by Kevin O'Leary. I know we didn't go into a really in-depth analysis, really didn't do any analysis. I just kind of shared some statements and shared some thoughts. Um, But maybe we'll look a little bit deeper, not just at, you know, his train of thought, but others going forward. Um, And we also looked at, you know, uh, helping specific industries and potentially just letting businesses fail. Uh, Because quite frankly, I don't think that we are doing a service to the economy, to the market, um, to the American consumer by propping up businesses that quite frankly um, are unwilling or unable to rise to meet the challenge of this current moment. Um, So I hope that this has been maybe not the most informative show, but I hope it's been uh, pretty thought provoking for you. I want you to kind of go away, kind of, you know, imagining a world in which Yes, some businesses failed and business failure probably happens pretty often, but imagine how much innovation that would actually bring to our economy when business leaders truly know and understand, yo, I've got to rise to meet the challenge or we're out. I can guarantee you innovation in every industry and every business would go through the roof in America. Anyhow, that said, I hope you have a fantastic Monday. Uh, I hope today sets a great tone for the rest of your week. I hope it's productive. I hope that you remain safe and you wear your face masks, your, uh, you have your hand sanitizer, and most of all, I hope if you have a hazmat suit that you break that sucker out because it's definitely needed. The pandemic is still raging. I know some of the numbers have declined a little bit, but we are not safe. And so don't fool yourself into thinking that. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you can go willy-nilly because now's not the time. It's time to remain diligent and remain safe and remain masked up and, you know, uh, just do everything you can to to make sure that you don't catch COVID because you don't want it. It's it's not a fun deal. Anywho, have a good one and uh, I will see you on Wednesday. Thank you for listening to this episode of our PAC Politics Podcast.